Hey everyone, Matt Wakeling here. You are listening to the Guitar Speak podcast. Hope you're doing really, really well. Hey, thank you for tuning in. Today we present the second of our iconic albums. It is Derek and the Dominoes' Layla and other assorted love songs, the early 70s classic, uh, spearheaded by Eric Clapton and with some amazing cameos by Dwayne Allman and others. Now, the iconic album series is where I'm joined by my friends Rob Rhodes and Gabor Jessica, and we talk about some of our favorite guitar records. Now, the interviews, which have been the focus of the Guitar Speak podcast for the five years of our existence, they're still coming through thick and fast. Recently, we've had Philip Sace, uh, Thomas Blug, and coming up for our next interview session in the next few days is Brian Canham, frontman from Pseudo Echo, hugely successful Australian band that had some breakout success in the States and Europe in the 80s and uh, Brian is a fantastic guitar player so you're going to love that interview too. All right after the break Iconic Albums number two is coming up. This episode is brought to you by The Pedal Movie, a feature-length film all about effects pedals created by the Music Gear Marketplace Reverb. I am super excited about this film. The Pedal Movie features nearly 100 interviews with people like Steve Vai, Peter Frampton, Jay Mascus, Billy Corgan and more including some of our Guitar Speak podcast alumni like Dweezil Zappa, Sarah Lipstate, Johnny Barmer and Brian Wampler. Reverb's The Pedal Movie is available now on iTunes, Google Play and Vudu. For more information visit www thepedalmovie.com Today's episode is also brought to you by Fretboard Biology, the comprehensive online guitar course put together by Joe Elliott. Now Joe is not only a fantastic guitar player, he draws on his years of experience as the ex-head of guitar at the Guitar Institute of Technology and also at the McNally Smith Music College. Here's a few words from Joe about the course. If you're tired of wading through hundreds of random guitar videos and just want to become a better player, Fretboard Biology is your answer. Fretboard Biology is a self-paced, college-level program that will give you the right instruction, in the right amounts, and in the right order. You'll learn the same information I taught to thousands of other guitar players over 30 years of teaching in top music colleges. If you want to make real progress with your guitar playing, then sign up for a free seven-day trial at fretboardbiology.com. Welcome back to the Guitar Speak podcast, Iconic Albums number two, joined again by Gabor Jessica. Hello. And hey, Matt. Hey, Gabor and Rob Rhodes. Woo, hello. Hey, Rob. Great to have you guys back. Number two, number one, Satriani, a huge critical response, all the emails, all the... The, the facsimiles were received enjoying that episode. <laughs> My pager was just ringing off the map. I got a few <laughs> telegrams. <laughs> awesome. So thanks for everyone's response. Actually, the truth is we're recording these first few episodes in one night. We don't know if you send us any telegrams, but we hope you have. Don't spoil the magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our second record, Layla and Assorted Love Songs by Derek and the Dominoes. Rob, you brought this album to our attention. Kick us off. Oh, look, I've always been a huge Clapton fan um, from Cream. Even, I think I started with the Yardbirds. And then uh, my parents bought this double or triple disc set called Backtracking. And that really got me into Clapton because they couldn't afford the Crossroads box set. And that was the cheaper option. So, um, okay. and still good. Yeah, and I think just my formative years, again, we talked about MTV, how big an influence they were, but they did the 24 Nights. Um, they played that on a Guitar Heroes special that uh, Richard Wilkins hosted, and there was a huge chunk of 24 Nights on that, and if I wasn't already a big Clapton fan, it, I was, you know, well and truly dialed in by then, and yeah, this album came much later. I, I Obviously, on backtracking, there was Layla and there was Little Wing, and things like that. But uh, I kind of discovered this album on my own. And that's a beautiful thing when it wasn't just cherry-picked from my parents' record collection like so many others. And, yeah, um, awesome. yeah I think for anybody who doesn't know this album, it was Dwayne Allman, like just got roped into the studio 
to record um, with Eric and his Delaney and Bonnie bandmates. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you get Layla and Assorted Love Songs, and everyone knows the title track, Layla. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I just think it's 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 for the it's one of those albums that was a slow burn. It wasn't a hit at the time. I think it did better in America than the UK. Um, and then just took off much later down the track. Um, once Clapton sort of established himself and people went digging into the back catalogue. And there's some Yeah. Some beautiful, beautiful guitar work and um gang vocals, I call them, from the seventies. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's very yeah, where everyone's up, singing yeah. the same note, just slightly differently intonated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, it has it, it just has some magic about this record. Uh, it just feels very natural, and um, one of the first with Clapton who featured the Strat. Um, he's, yes, yeah, it's a big deal. Um, Rob, where where in the Clapton timeline does this album land? All right. Well, this album was released in March 1970. So it's sort of, he'd come out of Cream, obviously. And uh, previous to that, the Yardbirds and John Mayle, uh, Blues Breakers. And he came out of Cream and he'd done Blind Faith as well with um, Steve Winwood. Yeah, yeah. Um, who had? I think he moved, went on to do traffic out of that, but um, but it was definitely he'd sort of gotten over being the front person, uh, and ha- having his name associated and the pressure that came with that, and yeah, yeah. This sort of was born out of that Delaney and Bonnie era, and yeah, that's that's sort of what happened and. I know this band, they all played on George Harrison's All Things Must Pass record as well. And yeah, it was a short-lived band and Dwayne Orman never performed with them live. And then obviously Clapton went on later to do Slow Hand and, and those records. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's really interesting that um, obviously when Cream exploded, all that Clapton is God era stuff, um, and then, then he's in the super group with Winwood. It's still pretty, pretty high stakes and, and high pressure. And yeah, you could tell he wanted the, the uh, camaraderie of a band. Yeah, he didn't even put his name on the record and shared a lot of the vocals and shared everything. Really, he just fits in the mix with everyone else in a lot of ways. Absolutely, yeah. and um, I think maybe just what were your what did you sort of. Gabor, the first time you would have heard this record, yes, apart from obviously Layla. Uh, yeah, so I'm again, once again, I'm the I'm the black sheep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't even know. That's how negligent I am. I didn't even know. I wrote down a lot of slide guitar. Did Clapton play slide guitar? Question mark. I didn't even know Dwayne Elman yeah. was on that album. Uh-huh. I knew. I think I knew he played on Layla, but I didn't know he. I didn't kind of make the connection that he played on all that album because there's a lot of slide guitar. Yeah, it's amazing, yeah. isn't it? Um, it, it's great actually yeah so th- again sort of the first things I sort of wrote down um, uh, it was less bluesy than I thought like I imagined it to be more bluesy mm-hmm. and it was actually less bluesy than I thought that was sort of my first reactions again very fuzzy guitar sound and I so and I you sent a little thing with your uh, research so he used to yeah, a can. little five water because it sounded like it was begging for mercy, <laughs> doesn't it? But it's great sound. It's that it's that really fuzzy, really yeah. on the verge of exploding guitar sound. It was great. Yeah. So for me, yeah, I, I, and I was, it was, I didn't expect to hear what I heard. I was sort of thinking more. Oh, that's sort of just uh, not long after Cream. I was. There are some Cream influences in it. You can definitely hear some, like Little Wing, that sort of very almost fanfare thing that they put in there. Yeah. Um, that sort of sounds very cream to me, but um, yeah, I, I, all up, I, I again, I'm not a massive blues fan, but uh, because I think because it's less bluesy than I originally thought, I actually I didn't mind it as much. It didn't. That sounds right. <laughs> sounds bad. I didn't mind it as much as I thought I would. <laughs> but I actually, I, I actually, I quite especially the acoustic numbers too. I quite like them. Yeah, yeah it's um, 
it, it's kind of got a country influence, you know. And I there's a, there's definitely you know, that came out yeah. of the Delaney and Bonnie thing, and he sort of had been doing a, he you know got those influences from Bob Dylan and then the band, a couple of things that he had something to do with, and uh, yeah, so that sort of ate into it a little bit. Yeah. How about you, Matt? What did you What did you think on Listen? Yeah, I mean, I've heard the album before. Um, as a youngster, I, I knew Layla and pretty much nothing else off off this record. Um, one of my notes was that it was a very American sounding record um, for early seventies compared to the stuff that Clapton had been doing, um, which is yeah. ironic because Clapton made his name playing blues, the American art form. Yeah. Um, but he was playing the British hot rodded version of that that yeah. British blues uh movement in 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 the sixties. So yeah, interesting. I, I noted the buzzy strat tone as well. In fact if I'm playing a, a covers gig and Rob, you might have some advice on this, but if there's ever that kind of tone, and I hear it on a lot of 70s records, um I find that hard to nail. Even going through the bands like, I don't know, like Skyhooks or um, even some of the Leonard Skinner tones. It, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. I guess because it's how it sits in the mix. And when you're playing live, it doesn't sit in the mix as well as it would through someone's hi-fi or, mm-hmm. you know, even though it yeah. does sound quite bright coming through Spotify, um, it is. I, I kind of steer away from those types of 70s tones. I, I'm a bit of a fuller sound. But I do take yeah. the low end away to make room for the bass and the keyboards and stuff. But sure. I guess it's just that bridge on a strap sound, isn't it? Yeah. Like small yeah. speaker, a little champ. And yeah. and a small speaker, really, really, really unhappy little speaker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Just> probably <laughs> something <laughs> like a Unidyne, something like a Unidyne 57 or something, <laughs> like right in the middle of the speaker mm-hmm. is picking, yeah, that, yeah. picking that sound up. And there's probably a little bit of the preamps in the mixes in those days adding to that as well, you know, like getting a bit of gain from those preamps of whatever mixes they were using back in the day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the Strat thing's a huge thing for Clapton because he'd spent the last uh, best part of a decade playing 335s and, and Les Pauls. SGs, through yeah. Cranked Marshalls. Yeah. yeah, the SG. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's, this, is, this is not quite blacky territory, is it yet? No, he used a 56 Strat, which people might know as Brownie. Um, yeah. So that was sort of his first venture in to that world. Um, and, oh, no, I've lost it. I know he bought that Strat from someone, but I can't remember who it was. I did read that uh-huh. recently. Um, but, yeah, when you put on the spot, this is what happens to a 45-year-old brain. <laughs> <laughs> I even wah, tried wah, coffee wah, too, wah. and it didn't work. <laughs> um, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing for everyone listening. Yeah, if if we we're, we're just rambling on and, and having a a hang talking about these albums. So if anyone listening's got any deets, extra deets you want to add or comments, man, send them in. We'd love to to share them. At, yeah, absolutely. on another show for sure. So that's that's all good. Yeah. So Dwayne Orman used a fifty-seven gold top. Um, yeah, for awesome. his parts. Not a lot of information on the amps he used, but um, he was using Marshall heads around that time, so there's a good chance that there was a JTM 45 or something like yeah, that yeah. lying around the studio. It was a nice sort of the, the contrast between the two sounds because like, it was such a like, round, warm kind of sound, the, the slide, and that really angry, buzzy exploding kind of rhythm sound often in the background behind it. Yeah. it it's a good contrast. Uh, I, I like yeah, it. Yeah, and, and the blues tunes on there, they weren't planned apparently. So um, Key to the Highway okay. um, was a late inclusion. It was just a jam that they fashioned into a 10-minute song. It, sound, it sounds like a jam. <laughs> no, They're stretching Nobody out, knows man. you when you're down and out. That was one on, on Clapton yeah. Unplugged. That was always one of my favorites. And I didn't, again, I didn't know it was on that album, but uh, it was it was a nice surprise when it came on. I really liked that song. Yes. Uh, yeah. And um, favorite tunes. Um, Matt, what did you, what was the standout for you? I've got two. I've got, um, I've got Layla. I mean, Layla is such a strong tune. Um, it's killer. Um, so definitely Layla. And I really loved, um, uh, is it Tree in the Garden, the acoustic tune? 
Yes, that was one of for me too. Yeah. Oh, be- just beautiful, beautiful tune. Great song, yeah. Yeah, it's it's there's a lot of there's a lot of dark and shade and light on this record. And how about for you, Gabor? What were you, what were standouts? Yep. Well, that one, uh, and then uh, well, Layla, of course. And one of the things I really like actually about Layla, uh, and and it's something generally I like. I like when songs have either intros or outros that are completely different to the song. That's I always like that. Mm-hmm. That's just something I like, and that's with that song I like. Uh, and nobody knows you when you're down and out, just because it's a, it's a, it sort of came on. It was a surprise. It came on, and I don't think I've ever heard the full band version. I've only ever heard the acoustic version. Yeah, I right. think. So when it came on, I was like, oh, cool, you know. So uh, they're probably my stand. Yeah, but um, the what is it? Tree in the garden. Thorn tree. In the garden. Yeah. 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 The garden. Yeah, that's the one. Sorry, I, I wrote it somewhere, but I couldn't find it. That was yeah. That's a great song. That's a, a great acoustic guitar sound. For me, um, Bell Bottom Blues is just a beautiful song. Um, mm-hmm. The the harmonies and later when he did that live on Twenty Four Nights, it honestly is one of the standouts in that on that record and live VHS that came out. You can probably get it on DVD now. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think I've got it on DVD. Um, and oh, and okay. then. Um, the other one is uh, Tell the Truth. And I just like that swampy kind of country thing. And when yeah. I saw Clapton at the Encent, uh, he had like a super group, you know, Willie Weeks on bass and Steve Jordan on drums. And then he had Doyle Brammel on one guitar and Derek Trucks on the other guitar. So Derek's doing oh, all of the Dwayne Orman stuff. Yeah. It's kind of like yep. a dream come true for me because they did so many songs off that record that Clapton didn't really do live. Um, so they're my two standouts. I got a little fun fact about Layla, which I don't know. I don't think I included in our notes. So this will be new, new for you guys. Okay. Now, Jim Gordon is the drummer of Derek and the Dominoes. And uh, yep. he was dating Rita Coolidge at the time. And they had written a song together. And this is Rita's version of events is they recorded this song to give to Eric, hoping he would record it. And then she heard Layla for the first time and her song tagged on the end. So that whole, oh, that so outro, outro, yeah, oh. she said oh. that's her song. Like they just took it. Wow. Oh. And that's the first time she heard heard of it is when that song came out. So, oh. Yeah, very interesting. And, and, and for anyone, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little bit interactive here. And I don't, I don't know how it's Ooh. going to pick it up through this mic, but I've got my acoustic guitar here. <laughs> and Ooh. I just want to explain the difference between 70s Clapton and 90s Clapton, how things changed. Yeah, and not just the hair and not just the gear, <laughs> not the fact that he stood up and sat down. But, and there were no suits. But obviously the 70s, and I'm going to screw this up, I know, because... Maybe we'll fix this in post <laughs> if I screw it up. But yeah, 70s Clapton. Come on. Right? And then 90s Clapton. And then it's different. Yeah. yeah. But funny enough <laughs> is that Dwayne Orman wrote the Layla riff and he stole it by speeding it up from an old blues song, which in my notes I've got it written here somewhere. Someone help me out. Did I write Yeah, it? yeah. Uh, as the years go passing by, the Albert King Albert tune. King t- so, yeah. yeah that's right. Which I first heard list, through Gary Moore. slowed it back down again. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah. What, what goes around, man? Hey, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back with more Clapton, uh, Layla, and other assorted conversation pieces. <laughs> I hope you are enjoying today's interview. Now, this podcast is brought to you by The Pedal Movie, a feature-length film all about effects pedals created by the music gear Mark Place Reverb. Now, you know we love guitar pedals here on the Guitar Speak podcast, and we're super excited on the release of this film. 
The pedal movie explores how effects pedals and their builders have shaped modern music and guitar playing over time, from the fuzz pedal experiments of the Rolling Stones and Jimi Hendrix, through the shoegaze and indie rock of the 90s, and up to the modern day use of effects. Reverb also speaks with builders and leaders from more than 50 pedal brands to answer the big question, how did guitar pedals get so big? Reverb's The Pedal Movie is available now on iTunes, Google Play and Voodoo. For more info, check out thepedalmovie.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Fretboard Biology, the comprehensive online guitar course put together by master guitar teacher Joe Elliott. Now, I was a beta tester for the course, and as a music educator myself, I was very impressed by the logical layout and format of the course. Heavyweight guitarists such as Brett Garsett and Greg Koch have also endorsed the program, so check it out at www.fretboardbiology.com. Okay, back to our interview. All right, welcome back. We are talking iconic albums. We're talking Clapton, uh, Layla, and other assorted love songs by really his his group, Derek and the Dominoes, a one album or double album only band. Man, it's a long album. It's like 17 tunes or something. It's a long record. It was it was two gigs driving to and from. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. The songs too. They're they're all the. There's a whole bunch of blues jams, but there's um, some others with like Layla that have a lot of modulations in them. So the the songwriting is a lot more sophisticated, uh, maybe than some of the earlier stuff we heard from Clapton. Yeah, I think he was just maybe exercising that that bone because he had been hanging around with George Harrison um, yep. and George Harrison's and wife. wife. That's right. Yeah. Which, <laughs> Evidently. It's a great segue right there. Yeah. It's a great hey, segue. Hey, yeah. We've like done this before. <laughs> um, but yeah, he'd been, he'd fallen in love with George Harrison's wife, Patty Boyd and um, had written Layla about her, but I'm sure that influence of being around those artists had really sort of kicked Eric or Derek in the butt to start writing um, some more sort of intricate progressions. Is that, is that where Derek came from? Is it kind of like Eric, but not, is that what it was? Or is it, or is it just a random name? To uh, pick? I think the story goes that uh, a venue owner or announcer of the show didn't like, he got the name wrong and he oh, called okay. it, uh, he called him Derek. Like when he was announcing Derek the Clapton. band and it was a bit of a, yeah, they sort of held on to that, I think. Uh, but it was okay, okay. born out of that. Eric wanted to be a little bit more behind the scenes and not have, be up front. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Hey, cool. Little Wing, we haven't talked about that. That's, that's a pretty cool cover, which was apparently recorded eight days before Jimmy's death. Yeah. Which is uh, oh, wow. pretty heavy. Yeah. yeah. What do we make of that cover? Well, it, to me, the, what I mentioned before, it, it that that was probably the most cream sounding song because it had that it they changed the they put that little fanfare thing in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and to me, just uh, I just thought cream. That was the first thing I thought of. It sound it, it it gave me that that tales of the great Ulysses kind of vibe. Yeah, nice. Um, you know, but a uh, good version. All that. it was like he was trying to out psychedelic Hendrix because Hendrix is like. <laughs> yeah really contained on that record on that song yeah. originally and uh yeah just a bit more measured and melodic and he decided i'm gonna make this i'm gonna take it out there and do something different but pay a homage to him as well because clapton and hendrix go way back um, yeah yeah from the old the like london days um Bad perm well, they, they played together. <laughs> Hendrix performed Sunshine of Your Love live on TV. Um, yeah. And he was a big Clapton yeah, fan yeah. and obviously gave them all a, a good kick in the butt too at the time. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, yeah. I liked, um, I liked the vocal harmonies on, on that. I think they sing harmony all the way through on the, on the Domino's version. Yeah, the dual lead vocal thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's... Yep. Which is kind of cool. 
I, I, I quite like it throughout the whole album because they've got such mm. different voices too. Yeah. But it works quite well together. I, I, I thought throughout the whole album, the harmonies were really good. And again, not very drum, not very guitar, but the drums, I thought the drums sounded great on that album. Again, very, very yeah. 70s. But uh, such great sounding drums. It, again, this is just a, yeah, not really guitar related, but just my five. Oh, yeah, one. it's great, man. It's great. <laughs> Clapton's vocals knock me out too. His vocal is awesome, man. Yeah, he's yeah. kind of underrated, you know. He's um, it's quite. It's also timely that we're talking about Eric Clapton because is he like the biggest topic on YouTube at the moment? Is how much John Mayer is sounding like '90s Clapton? <laughs> it's like oh, every yeah, true. And, and, looking, looking, and looking and every yeah, yeah. second <laughs> video is about dissecting his guitar tone and Clapton's tone and um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, at Layla, um, it actually won a Grammy, but not until 92. Wow. For the Unplugged version. W- with so, Unplugged, with yeah. Unplugged, yeah. <laughs> Which is a fantastic record too. Oh. I love that, yeah. Which is funny. I never really got into, into the, like the electric side of Clapton, but the Unplugged album, I love that. That was, on, I still got, I, one of the first tab books I bought, Remember tab yeah. books, people? <laughs> uh, was of the Unplugged album because I really wanted to learn some of the songs off it. Yeah. And, and um, the, what was it? The, the, uh, the instrumental song on it, uh, Sign or Sig? I don't know how to pronounce it. Signy, oh, Sign? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. I never quite know how to pronounce it, but all the, I love, I mean, this is getting away from this album, but uh, yeah, the Unplugged album was killer. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And at, at the time, like, we're going to get some crossovers of that 92 era. Um, but at the time, it was sort of against. What was happening? Everything, yeah. It had slowed it down, and that was the big adult contemporary push of the that early nineties period. Mm, definitely, definitely, awesome, mate. Great record, Rob. Great choice. Thank you. Two thumbs up. Yeah, I couldn't leave this one out. If it's yeah, not a video, huh? I would have bought the vinyl out, and you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to? We should. We should know, or you want to finish with, Rob? Um. No, I think, I think that sort of we've gotten to everything as far as Eric and Derek goes. All right, there you go. Derek and the Dominoes classic album, Layla and Other Assorted Love Songs, number two in our iconic series. Rob, thanks for bringing that album. Next week, Gabor brings his first choice to us. Can't wait to share that episode with you. I won't tell you what the band and the album is just yet. We might uh, save that. But it's, uh, it was a fun conversation as well, so that's coming up too. My thanks to the sponsors of today's episode. Reverb's The Pedal Movie is out now, and Fretboard Biology's online guitar course is also available. Please check out the links in our show notes for more information. Well, time to go, but if I can leave you with a piece of advice that Michael Schenker gave me when he was on this podcast recently, he said, keep on rocking. Sounds good to me. All right, thanks for joining me on the Guitar Speak podcast. My name's Matt Wakeling. I'll catch you next time. Bye now.